Over the years, we've seen teams make some critical mistakes when building their first chassis. In this video, we're going to show you how to avoid those mistakes. For example, it's important to know what kind of metal you plan on using. What do you mean? There are two different kinds of metal, steel and aluminum. It's important that you don't mix the two. What's the difference? Steel is a lot darker and heavier than aluminum. You shouldn't mix steel and aluminum in your chassis. This is a modeled chassis that is made entirely of aluminum. Notice how the center of gravity is perfectly in the middle of the chassis. See how when I make part of the chassis out of steel, the center of gravity shifts. As you can see, the basic chassis I built here drifts to the left when pushed straight because of the offset center of gravity. We should also talk about the difference between caps nuts and locking nuts. Caps nuts are fine for prototyping, but you'll want locking nuts for the final robot. After a day of competition, you'll find that caps nuts will loosen and fall off. However, you'll need some extra tools to tighten them. In addition to your screwdriver, you'll need a wrench. As you can see here, all you need to do is hold the nut with the wrench and turn the screwdriver to the right. While we're making the chassis stronger, let's talk about structure. The more places where the C-channels are connected, the less the overall structure will bend and shift. Connecting the two C-channels at a single point, it obviously bends very easily. Adding another C-channel in the middle goes a long way. But if possible, having two contact points at opposite ends ensures rigidity. Another important part of structure is your axles. Axles are really thin and thus are very prone to bending. Axles should therefore always be supported on two opposite sides. The most important thing with axles is to use axle collars. Axle collars are like locking nuts for axles. They stop your wheels and gears from wiggling around and falling off. You should be using them all the time when building with axles. Spacers are also important. There are a few different forms of them, but you should mainly only use these thick nylon spacers. They can be used on axles to stop parts from wiggling around without needing to use a bunch of axle collars. Next, let's talk about what this chassis will do for you. The most important part of every chassis is how fast it can go, and that is determined by three main factors, the gear ratio, the motor cartridge, and the wheel size. A gear train is a group of gears that are connected together. As you can see here, when I spin the gear at the end, each gear behind it also starts spinning. As you can see, gears right next to each other also spin in opposite directions. You should use a gear train in your chassis for two main reasons. First, it helps your motors work together. Without a gear train, if one wheel lifts off the ground, the motor can't help. But with a gear train, all the motors spin all the wheels, which leads to more power all the time. In this demo, you can see me spinning one gear leads to all the other gears spinning as well. Second, gear trains help you control speed and strength. You may have noticed that the smaller gear in the center is spinning considerably faster than the others. That's because a big gear spinning a small gear makes the small one spin faster, but with less strength. A small gear spinning a big one makes it slower, but stronger. You might be tempted to use chain on your chassis. However, while chains and sprockets may initially seem simpler, gears offer several major advantages. For one, as long as the gears are securely attached, they can't fall out. Meanwhile, chains can break or snap off. Secondly, the extra axles going through the drivetrain can add structure, while the tension of the chain can harm it. Find the gear ratio, divide the number of teeth of the driven gear by the number of teeth of the driving gear. Since we're spinning a 60 tooth gear, it's the driving gear. So the 36 tooth gear on the right is the driven gear. So when building your chassis, think about what you need more of, speed or power, and pick the right gear ratio. The motors you have on your chassis are also really important in determining the speed and power of your chassis. VEX offers the standard 11 watt motors and the smaller 5.5 watt motors. We recommend using six 11 watt motors for your chassis, with four motors being the absolute minimum. The 11 watt motors also have cartridges that can be swapped out. The default green cartridge is a good balance of speed and strength. Red is stronger but much slower, making it a good choice for a lift. Blue is faster but very weak, making it ideal for a flywheel or intake. Using a combination of specific cartridges and gears, you can narrow down the exact combination of speed and strength that you're looking for. 
For example, say we're looking for an RPM between 300 and 400. Maybe a little slow, but very controllable. We know a blue motor is 600 RPM, so we need to slow that down. If our motor is attached to a 36 tooth gear, and the wheel is attached to a 60 tooth gear, then our final RPM is 600 times 36 divided by 60, which is 360. Now, the final step is to pick the size and type of wheels you want to use. The primary wheel that is used is the Omni wheel because its side rollers allow for fast turning. However, other teams can easily push you from the side, causing some teams to use a hybrid design using both Omni and traction wheels. Larger wheels are faster than smaller ones, and with the same RPM you can travel a larger distance. Wow, thanks for helping me create this amazing new chassis. No problem. And if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Who are you talking to?